I've decided to revamp my very first set of videos I did when I was building my gaming PC because at the time my account wasn't verified, couldn't upload long videos. So I decided to re-edit all the video footage and upload it as one continuous stream of video footage. Um, so I'm going to take down the three original videos and re-upload it as one original video following this little introduction. So hope you enjoy it. And uh, let's go. Right, well, the time has finally come. Um, we've finally got all the parts for the new Ryzen 5 gaming PC that I'm going to build. Uh, so, first of all, I'll just take you through the parts that we've got. Uh, start off with a case. We have a Colink Stronghold uh, ATX case with a full tempered glass side panel. Um, it has uh, a completely blank front. In the top we have two USB 2.0s and a USB 3.0 and obviously the ubiquitous headphone and mic in jacks. Nice solid power button and a reset button. Also at this point here is a button where there would be an RGB switch if the case had RGB. So it's obviously an option on this particular manufacturer's case. Uh, on the back we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, or six seven expansion ports. Uh, we have a 120mm fan in the back, we have another 120mm fan in the front, um, but there is space for 320s or two 140s in the front, and in the top there's space for two 120s or two 140s on a sliding rail. Um, because it only comes with two fans, and there is actually space for six in total, I've also got four Cooler Master uh, rifle bearing 120mm fans to go in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the one out the back and the one in the front so I'll put them in the top so that's a match pair in the top put a Cooler Master one in the back and then the other three Cooler Master ones in the front so I've got neutral air pressure front and rear uh, for import and output of, uh, of heating. Uh, it does have a PSU shroud and two three and a half inch drive bays um, there is no support for uh, SSD, so to that end, when I get down to the, to the storage, uh, I bought um, a 25 to 3.5 inch drive adapter so I can put the SSD into one of the 3.5 inch bags. So that's the case. Um, power supply wise, this isn't a Be Quiet, this is one of only three items in the entire build that is actually second hand. Um, this is actually an FSP Aurum CM. 750 semi-modular PSU. It's 80 plus gold rated. Um, the 24 pin uh, main wall power and 8 pin EPS power for the CPU are permanently fixed. Everything else is modular. Because of the way this system is going to be set up, I'm only going to actually need one, one more cable to plug in and that's going to be power for SATA for the storage, for storage in the system. Uh, to go with cables, most on top there. Uh, I have actually bought some sleeved uh, power cables. I've got a 24 pin, uh, an 8 pin, and I also bought at the time a 6 pin PCIe because the card I had bought, uh, which turned out to be a fake, I was one of the uh, victims of the Chinese scammers. Uh, that required 6 pin PCIe, but it turns out it was a fake card anyway, so that's gone the way of the dodo. So I've actually bought another card. So the 6-pin PCIe won't actually get used. Uh, motherboard wise, we've got an AB350 Gaming from Gigabyte. Um, twin PCIe, 116x, 14x. Uh, four DIMM slots will support up to, I believe, 64 gigabyte of RAM. Um, now I've gone for the, three, the, the, the B350 chipset rather than the X370 because I don't intend overclocking. So you, you, you normally buy the X370 if you're going to overclock and, and max out your graphics card and your CPU, etc., and your RAM. Uh, but because I don't intend doing that, I figured the B350 was a, a good chipset, and I got a good deal on this at the time as well anyway. This was about 25 quid cheaper than the, uh, the X370 version of the same board. So, oh, everything's falling over. Right, uh, RAM wise, I've gone for uh, HyperX Fury 2400. That's a 2x8 gig kit, so 16 gig of RAM there. 
which is plenty enough for everything that I'm going to do with this PC uh, as regards gaming. Um, and it's uh, got some nice heat spreaders on it as well. You'll notice everything's pretty much black or it's got bits of red in it. Well, you know, that's why I went for red accents in the power cables. The motherboard itself has red accents and obviously the, the RAM is black with the heat spreaders. Uh, CPU wise, we have gone for the Ryzen 5 1600, uh, not the 1600X. Um, to be perfectly honest, I think it worked out it was about 12 quid dearer for the 1600X for on the base clock an extra 200 megahertz. I didn't really feel it was worth it. I'm going to get the performance I want out of the base, basic 1600. Like I said, I'm not going to overclock it. You'll notice there's not um, a separate cooler or an AIO, AIO water cooling system because the 1600, unlike the 1600X, does come with AMD's Wraith Spire cooler, which is perfectly adequate. It will do the job, especially considering the amount of fans I'm going to have in the case. So that's the cooler. And this was the last item we were waiting to arrive, was the graphics card. We have got an Asus Phoenix Edition GeForce GTX 1050 Ti 4GB. Um, very good card. If I did intend to overclock it, I could get very close to the performance of a 3 gig 1060 with this 1050 Ti, but for about a third of the price. Um, this is going to walk all over the games that I intend to play. Uh, I'm not playing kind of game, playing games like Battlefront, etc. etc. This, this PC was originally designed primarily to play World of Warcraft. This machine will eat World of Warcraft for breakfast. Uh, having seen some reviews online, I should be getting 100 FPS at 1080p all day long. Um, and the other beauty of this card is it does not require additional power from the PSU. It draws all its power through the PCIe slot. So there's no requirement for an additional PCIe power plug to go into the card. So that's the base hardware. If we come down the front now, Storage wise, we have a crucial MX100 128 gig SSD 2.5 inch form factor. The board itself does support um, an M.2 drive, if I had one, uh, NVMe PCIe. Um, but price wise, they're still a bit pricey at the moment, so that may be something I'll look at doing in the future. Um, so the SSD is going to be for the OS and some basic applications. For mass storage, we have a Western Digital Caviar Green, one terabyte. Um, that's going to be more than enough for the games that I'm going to put on this PC. This PC is a second PC. I do actually have a workstation PC set up, uh, which does all my office applications, etc., etc., video editing and stuff like that. So this machine will not have anything to do with any of the my daily functions on a PC. Uh, this is the drive adapter I bought for the SSD, uh, so I can fit it into the three and a half inch drive bay. The other item, one other item I have down here is a little Bluetooth dongle, Bluetooth 4.0 and backwards compatible, because I have got a gamepad, Bluetooth gamepad coming um, for when I play games like Fortnite, which is everyone's playing at the moment. So. Um, but yeah, just a little Bluetooth dongle, 4.0, backwards compatible. Operating system wise, we have Windows 10 64-bit Pro. Um, obviously, the, the machine itself won't have an optical drive, so I have actually loaded the operating system onto a USB thumb drive, and that's how it will be loaded. Uh, but we do have a, a genuine original license there, so we can activate the Windows. So that is the entire kit. I will go into a bit more detail in every single item, especially things like the motherboard and the case, etc. when we come to do the assembly, which will be um, in the next video. do the build. So we'll start off by uh, preparing the case. So to remove the glass side panel, we have four little thumb screws. <laughs> Didn't want to do that. And then the panel just lifts off like 
So, we'll put that down there out of the way to be safe. Um, we also need to remove two more thumb screws from the back of the other side because we will need access. Didn't want to do that. I'll pick that screw up later because it's going to be a while before we get back into the case and put the side panels on. So, we need to remove this back panel as well so we can get access to the power supply cage and also the hard drive cage. So we have all the case accessories that we have here. So we have some standoffs, some more thumb screws, that's good, and looks like uh, hard drive screws, motherboard screws, express drive. And we also have in here some screws for hard drives and some little zip ties to go with the ones that I've already got. Um, I mean, this is my selection of tools that I will have. I will have some cable ties or zip ties for doing my cable management, set of side cutters to go with, and a Phillips head screwdriver. That's really all you need to put a computer together these days, it's just those three tools. And then there's also, from the inside of the case, a uh, blanking plate for the back of the case. So we'll put all those to one side for now. So, as you can see, we have hard drive shroud. And we have, in the back, power supply cage. Hard drives go in here. Now, the good thing about this particular case is all the front panel connectors come off with the front panel. The front panel is not tied to the case in any way. So I'm going to remove this for now because there's a certain few things I need to prep within the case before we go to the point of uh, mounting motherboard etc so as I said in the, uh, the parts of this video we've got a fan here and we've got another fan in the back here these two I'm going to remove and place in the top um, because I need to remove the front fan anyway to get to the mounting screw points on this side for the hard drives so I'm going to remove these fans then I'm going to put the storage in and then we're going to start putting fans in place before we do the motherboard. And these fans will go back in place up the top, as I said, and the Cooler Master ones will take their place down the front. So have to remember to keep these two longer screws to one side to remount the fan in the bottom. So that's one. Obviously when you do mount fans in any position within a case, you do have to take account of the airflow direction arrows that are normally embossed on one of the four sides of the fan uh, and it tells you the spin direction of the fan and it also tells you the flow direction of the air. So such as in this case, it tells me that the spin direction is that way when it's powered up and the airflow direction is that way. So when I mount it in the top, it'll get mounted such a way so that it sucks the warm air out of the case and throws it out the top. Uh, talking of the top, there is actually a magnetic dust shield or dust filter on the top, so that'll need to come out as well. So that is the case now stripped to its metallic bare bones. So before we go ahead and start doing the fans, we're going to, or should we? No, I think we'll leave 
the hard drives till after we've done the motherboard installation. So that is the case basically prepped, um, except for standoffs of which. Right, so yes, um, what we'll probably do is we'll wait until I've built the board up and then we'll test p p test fit it into the case to see where we need extra standoffs. The case has come pre-fitted with six standoffs, which would normally be the positions for a Micro ATX motherboard, although on a normal Micro ATX this one would normally be here. Um, but uh, because it's an ATX board, we'll get the board built up, test fit it into the case, see where we need extra standoffs, and then we'll get those put in, and then we'll put the iron shield in, and then we'll mount the motherboard, and then we'll move on to the other parts. So I'm going to put the case down here out of the way for now, and we'll move on to the motherboard. So, Amy. Right, so in the box we have a set of SATA cables and another set of SATA cables. Now we're only going to need to use, because there's two in each pack, we're only going to need to use one pack because we're only putting two storage devices into the PC. So one pair of SATA cables can go spares into stock. Give this out, what else is in here? So we have motherboard manual. Motherboard driver disc, multilingual installation guide, um, so some uh, foreign language stuff, and the IO shield to go into the back of the case. So we'll keep that to one side. Now for the big unveiling of the motherboard. I've not had this out of the box at all since it arrived. So, as we said, we've got four DIMM slots, two PCIe slots, um, the PCIe 3.0, we've got two PCIe 1 slots, there's the M.2 slot for a, an NVMe PCIe uh, um, SSD, um, fan headers, we've got one, two, three, four fan headers, uh, this one is for the power supply, so we've got a fan header here which will run up to the top, uh, I've actually got some um, fan header splitters because the, the fan point here will, f will feed for the rear fan. This one will go onto here and it will feed the two top fans. This one will go onto here and feed the three front fans. And then if I do ever need a um, water cooling pump, that is this one. This one will do system fan or it will do a water cooling pump. So that's that. Uh, but all in all, quite a sexy looking board. Uh, I'm looking forward to building into it. So, first thing we need to do is we need to put in the processor. So again, first time the box has been opened, Should have bought my little standing knife. And we'll use the blade. Use the blade from side cutters. There we go. So there is our Ryzen 5 CPU. So um, I don't know how well this is going to turn out because I haven't got another camera for doing the uh, the overhead close-ups. So, uh, pretty much like every other ZIF socket or Zero Insertion Force socket ever since back in the days of socket 7 and possibly before. Um, so we have a little lever on the side, so we push it to one side and lift up. We'll also have a little rise. 
2005 sticker in the package as well, but uh, I want to try and keep this case as clean as possible so I won't be putting any stickers on the case. Okay, so being careful not to touch the heat spreader top. On the CPU there is a little gold arrow, a uh, little gold triangle in one corner, and that matches up with the little triangle printed or embossed on the corner of one of the one corner of the socket. So you basically lay the CPU over the top and it should just drop in. Uh, just give it a quick wiggle, make sure it's in, and then we just push the lever down and lock it into place. There is the CPU socketed. So we'll put that back in there. And as we said in the, uh, the other video, it does come with a cooler. Nice, big, juicy Wraith Spire cooler. So I think that might be just a standard piece of packaging because um, the Race Fire Cooler is available as an RGB version as well. So that might be just a standard cable they put in all the packaging. Um, one thing we do need to do because this cooler actually just screws down onto the PC, um, we do actually need to remove these two clip mounts for. Uh, mounting a clip-on cooler. So just undo these four screws. The back plate that they're screwed into we will need to keep because that's what the cooler will screw down onto. So we're going to keep all of these bits in here. need to put any additional thermal paste on. Now you'll notice there is actually an, an AMD logo uh, on a little thingy. It's personal preference which way around you put this. Me personally because I don't like to have too much um, spare cabling I'm going to mount it this way. You can only mount this way or this way because it is an oblong configuration for the screws so it can only mount this way with the AMD logo this side, or this way with the AMD logo this side. If I mount it this side, I've got a shorter run of cable for the CPU fan header. So I'm going to mount it this way. So we drop that down onto the screw mounts. And I'm just going to get each corner started. Just to get the screws started into the back plate. And then I'm going to tighten down corner to corner. Um, a bit of a technical issue uh, while we were recording the build of the computer. Uh, it was my own fault. I forgot to put the bigger memory card into the camera, so we ran out of space on the memory card while we were recording. I didn't realise this. Carried on with the build regardless, narrating to no one as I was doing the build. Uh, but as you can see, it is now all done. Uh, it's been up and running for a day or so now, just to get everything running properly. Um, we have been running World of Warcraft, and we have been getting constantly 80 FPS plus on level 9 graphics settings. If I max the settings out, it drops down to about 70 FPS, uh, which is really good for this machine. Uh, I don't know if you can pick it up in here, but the, uh, the CPU cooler does actually have... A, uh, a red ring in it. It does actually have RGB uh, and if you can really pick it out the motherboard has some little red RGBs down the back side of it as well where it goes to the back of the case. I uh, probably can't see it too well because I've got the actual uh, side panel on the case which is tinted tempered glass so it is actually darkening things down a bit in there. Bit of a shame really because you can't see the lovely uh, sleeved cables that we put in there 
um, as cable extensions to the motherboard 24 pin power supply and the CPU EPS 8 pin power supply as well uh, but take my word for it they do look good uh, if you do want to see pictures of the inside of the case then please put a note in the comments and I'll take some pictures and upload them to the um, ITCS uh, Facebook page which I will also put a link for in the description um, but other than that, we ran Heaven Benchmark, uh, our, even on Ultra we were getting anywhere between 75 and 80 FPS on Ultra settings. Uh, Cinebench, I do believe it was, I oh, can't remember now, I, I have got it somewhere, the, uh, the actual results for Cinebench. Um, if I can find the results for it. I don't know where it is. It's not there. No, wherever it is. Anyway, we got some really, really good results on the Cinebench. Um, topping out on the GPU list and third in place on the CPU list on the Cinebench uh, for 64 bit. So, all in all, really good system. And as you can hear, extremely quiet. Even with technically eight fans in the case. We've got six case fans, the CPU fan and the, the GPU fan all running and it's practically silent. You can't hear a thing. Um, from pressing the power switch to a workable Windows desktop we're talking 25 seconds as opposed to my workstation PC it can take upwards of 40 seconds to get to a, de a working desktop. So just going to show how powerful this new machine is. Uh, it's probably going to serve me for quite some time. Uh, I did say in the, uh, the, other, the other video, I think it was, that I've got a USB game, uh, sorry, not USB, a Bluetooth gamepad coming. I've got a Bluetooth dongle in here and Bluetooth gamepad, which is now all paired up. So when I get round to it, I'll be uh, putting Fortnite on here and seeing how that runs as well when using the gamepad. Um, I have actually got another one of these screens coming. Um, so I will actually be getting this into a twin screen setup as well, uh, same as my workstation PC. So yeah, looking good. Like I say, if you want to see some close-up pictures of what it's like inside the machine now, but now all the bills done for what it looks like for cable management and what it looks like with the uh, sleeved cable extensions, please put a note in the comments and I'll do my best to get the pictures uploaded as quick as I can. Um, but all in all, thanks for watching. Um, if you're after a new PC, a new games PC or a workstation PC, drop a note in the comments, I'll get in touch with you, see what you're after it for and I'll give you a price um, because I don't just build them for myself and family, I actually do do it as a, a part time business as well, so please support local businesses. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, as always, if you did, please pop a like, hit the subscribe button, don't forget to click on the bell so you get notified when the next video goes up. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.